guys welcome back to another video i know the lighting isn't necessarily the best but today i do want to talk about what it's like breeding isopods at a business level now i've realized when i was doing it as a hobby it's way different um a lot less maintenance than there is as, as a business level because we are breeding a lot more i'm gonna go over my bins like this one is for the dairy cows that i have i have a tons of other species right over here and don't mind uh what it looks like down here i got my office space I got all my other species and everything all over there as well. But down here, um, these are four different types of species. Um, two of them are the same species, but a different morph. Uh, well, these two are different as well. So I just wanted to go over what it's like um, just with these four species. I will have a video coming up that is going to talk about um, uh, basically like going in depth of all the different species that we have and like some different projects that I'm wanting to do. I know I'm going to be posting this one on my personal channel because this is basically an update on all of my isopods, um, but I'm also going to be posting this on my business channel as well. So if you guys are on my personal channel, you guys want to check my business out, it's going to be featuredcreatures.shop. Um, you can go to our Facebook page at Featured Creatures um, and stuff like that. We're going to be making more educational videos but and, um, you know, kind of like a mix between, you know, I turned this hobby into a business. So. I just want to go over that right now. So I'm going to start off with these guys. These guys, as you can see, these these guys before, if you guys don't even know the name of them yet and you guys can't see them too well, I'm going to go over that in just one second. But these guys breed so fast and they eat so much that I constantly have to refill this leaf litter. Once it gets skeletonized like that, that's when I change it out um, because there's parts like this. They do it so fast and I constantly am having to basically boil leaves and uh, put them in here for them. Um, my maintenance for all of these guys, for all of these bins is every Monday and Thursday. So around every three to four days is when I come inside of these bins. I don't open them all up at the same time, or at least I don't move um, you know, this around. I just open them up, spray, and then put some food down as well as leaves if I have to replace the leaves. But for these guys, these are called orange powdered or Priscilla pruinosis we got tons of orange powdered here we got two bins of them actually this one is stacked on top of the other orange powdered but we got tons of babies that are that are like you know coming uh growing up and breeding in here these guys breed extremely fast these guys are really good for air environment you guys see the springtails that we're breeding but these guys are really good for arid environments um and you can basically put them in a lot of different type of environments and they're going to do extremely well in that's why we have a lot of these these are kind of like a staple in the hobby of what most people are going to buy as their starting colony um but the maintenance for these guys i used to only have to look after them maybe once a week once every two weeks until i started once i changed uh my hobby into a little bit more of a business i've been starting to breed a lot of these guys so i have that then and then I have this one down here. Everything is labeled. Don't mind this labeling because clowns used to be in here um, a long time ago before I actually got a label maker and started just putting the names on whatever current species is in there. Um, but these bins I made in August. That one is true, the species is not. These bins I put together in August, so it's been three months, around that four to six months um, is when I really start changing out bins. Um, I do have everything on a schedule. Um, of when I feed them, what I'm feeding, what I do that day. Um, well, I know what I'm feeding, but uh, when I'm feeding and what I'm, what I'm doing with that day. So if I'm doing the roaches or if I'm doing the isopods, taking care of the plants, doing the springtails, usually try and do the isopods and the springtails at the same time. But like for these guys, like I said, we have a lot of them, a lot. And if you order for my business, we believe in Thrive Over Survive. So you always get at least the minimum of a 15 count especially for these guys that breed so much for us we are not stingy on uh on selling these guys so you don't have to worry about getting you know 10 um i think we do it for 15 dollars or 14.99 on our website and you get 15 to 25 15 to 30 sometimes um, but the bare minimum is a 15 count so we believe that you should be able to start your colonies and not have to worry about them struggling or waiting a long time to see babies um basically we just go like this and we just flip that into a deli cup and if there's 20 in there if there's 30 in there sometimes even if there's 40 we're not too worried about it we want you guys to have a great time and a great experience inside of the hobby we're not necessarily worried about profits but 
the maintenance for these is, like I said, every Monday and Thursday, I have to go through every single one of these bins. All of these bins uh, that are right here uh, for each one. Some of these have two bins. Some of them just have one bin for a species. But I have to go through every single one of these bins, water them, feed them, replace leaves if I need to replace leaves, um, monitor them, which just makes sure that, you know, if I see some start dying off and there's no reason necessarily for it, that's also a good way that I know I need to change out the soil because ammonia is a killer. It will kill all of your species and that's where you'll have bad crashes. So I will go over the setups of these bins as well. So I don't have it in this one because I do water this one a little bit more often because I, you know, with people ordering, I'm in this bin a little bit more. But for other bins, kind of like even the, uh, the dairy cows like this, I'm gonna have it in the other um, gestroid bin as well. We have these little pockets of, you guys can see this one right here. Oh, I thought that one was dead, Never mind. Uh, I am gonna be changing out these bins in the next three months as well. But we have a lot of these guys. Um, this is only one bin of two, but we have a lot of them um, in here. And they just started having babies again. So another little baby boon is coming. But I do like to put like a corner where I focus a lot more leaves at and to keep it nice and dry or nice and humid in there. Um, but most of these bins, now I'm in here, if you're gonna be bringing them as a, you know, at home, uh, where you're not really looking into them all the time, then you, I definitely recommend putting a piece of sphagnum moss in the corner, kind of like this. We did it a lot for the dairy cows this time. I probably will do it a little bit less for them next time, just because I'm in these bins more often, which means I'm spraying them a little bit more. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not lifting up the cork bark or anything like that. I have great success with breeding them. I mean, look at, you guys have seen the bins so far. These are our Oreo crumbles just under that one. I'm about to spread these into two different bins because we have all of these that are breeding. Um, we have one bin of those. We have the whiteouts underneath. Um, but it's, you know, it's very important to make sure that you have a schedule that you can keep going with all of these guys. It is breeding a lot. You guys can see this is just one of our bins of dairy cows. We have two bins that are just like that. This one and the one underneath. But what we feed here is bug burger. Uh, we use morning wood too, um, but we definitely use a lot more bug burger uh, just because it's a little bit more readily available around our roaches as well. So we use that for these guys. We basically put it as a powder on top of here. Um, none of these guys have, fortunately, I can't show you. Any of the guys, none of these guys have any powder on top of theirs anymore. I put that every Monday and Thursday, um, the powder on top, and they eat it over the next three days. And then I water the rest of the enclosure. So underneath is where they can keep it a little bit more drier, a little bit drier where they'd want to be. And then they'll come out and then, uh, you know, get the humidity that they're looking for outside of there. So the next thing that I would say is like any tips on if you're wanting to breed um, bigger like this is one, if you don't have a schedule, make sure you get a schedule. But two, um, always monitor. That's a big thing. I know I'm saying it's like a feeding schedule, but you always want to monitor. Um, getting bins that are not see-through is not necessarily going to help or hurt these guys. If you give them a lot of hiding when it comes to like underneath cork bark um, or all the leaf litter in there, that is gonna be perfect enough because you guys can see I have this light that's right here. It's right on top of these guys. And you guys see how many that I have that I'm breeding at a time. I mean, look at just the magic potion bin <laughs> right there. Just what's on this side with the sphagnum moss and that goes all the way throughout the bin. We have the zebras, milk backs, um, we have clowns, maracas, papayas. I'll go over just a few of them. Giant canyons, blue powdered, orange dalmatian, um, orange cream, Priscilla lavis whites, um, pudding clowns, uh, flower marg marginatus, uh, witch's brew, giant Croatian, Valencia, um, peach, pearls, uh, lemonades, blue, or uh, what is that? Ukraine pied, skewball tribe, rubber duckies. Um, cappuccinos, pak chong, orange koi. We have tons of different species, expanses as well. Um, and that's how we do all of these bins. What we like to do for a mixture in the dirt is a lot of people say that you are going to need this and you're going to need that. I'm going to be honest with you. 
you don't necessarily need it. Um, what I like to do is I have a piece of rock in here. As you guys can see, this is the limestone that these guys thrive off of. Um, they pick and choose when they want to get it. You guys can see they actually will live under it too. And I put a piece of rock, uh, limestone, some pieces are a little bit smaller. I want to make sure I'm not crushing any of them. So I put that in slowly. But that's also why you don't want to move things around so much so you don't crush your isopods that are in there. Because when you crush them and start stressing them out, then they're not going to breed. Um, and by them being able to breed and seeing how fast they breed is kind of where you can see where their stress level is at as well. But what we use is a mixture of organic uh, garden soil that has, you know, the mulch and stuff in it, kind of like that, that you can see. It already has that in there, which is going to be a nice wood um, that the isopods will break down as well a little bit over time. And then we throw leaves that we have here um, that we boil, we sanitize, and we toss that within the dirt with a nice mixture of sphagnum moss. So you have a nice fluffy concentration, uh, not concentration, but a nice fluffy aerated soil that's mixed with food all throughout. And uh, your isopods, as they're burrowing, as they're on top, um, all the different stages that they're going to be in, in Monkai and then adults, you know, they're going to be able to eat all the substrate underneath the soil and uh, grow from that as well as what's on top. So you get a nice thriving colony of almost whatever isopods that you want, whatever isopod species. These guys are great to keep exactly like that. There's not much that you have to do. Um, I'd rather say, I'd say you... We're only going to spend $10 a bin, maybe, for around four to six months of keeping them in there between the dirt um, and stuff like that. The dirt, the leaves are free if you go in your backyard, um, wait for them to dry out a little bit, and then sanitize them by boiling them or putting them in the oven. Um, that's a good way to do that. And that's already free food. Um, you definitely can use a repot or... Um, you definitely can use fish flakes if you want to, but what I use, like I said, is gonna be the Rapashi Bug Burger, is what I sprinkle on top of each and every one of these enclosures on top of the cork bark after I watered the plants and leave the cork bark dry. And that's because it doesn't mold as fast as fl fish flakes are going to. So as you guys can see, like I have a healthy amount of springtails in there as well. And I have a really healthy amount of springtails with these guys. But even with that, I don't want to put a food in here that's going to mold so fast and so easily. So to me personally, Rapashi or Variums in the Mist are two products that I trust um, that aren't going to mold that fast, not going to kill the isopods or anything like that. Nothing that I have to worry about. So it gives me less maintenance with these bins overall. Um, it's great for me because out of all the bins that I have and still having a uh, part-time job right now, until we get um, a few more things, like we want to open up the warehouse within this next year um, and expand a lot more on our isopod species. Um, it's great to have something that's a little bit less care or less maintenance to be able to have, you know, a great a great product, which is these guys. Um, so you're getting a healthy, I think that's another reason why they breed so well for us is because fish food doesn't necessarily have all of the nutrition that the isopods need having the bug burger does give you bug burger or morning wood um, or even super load gives you almost everything that you need for these guys and for them to breathe like really well really fast so it's like you get numbers like this and just one of your bins of dairy cows because that is a lot and we've already sold a lot but you get numbers like this when you start breeding that well and when i'm able to do something that's a little bit less maintenance um, where I don't have to come in and flip over the flip over each and every bin every time just to see um, if they're doing well. This is exactly what you'd want if you're going to start breeding, kind of like a business like we are. So we have around 60 species now. Not every single one of them are going to be on our on our website right now because obviously since we like to do the 15 count for the price of a 10 count. Um, and then sometimes even a little bit more in there and we do deals all the time on stuff. Um, you know, the demand for all of our roly polies is definitely, uh, all of our isopods and everything has definitely gone up. So that's why everything's not on our website right now because we wanna make sure those numbers get to exactly where they're at. But with this is, you know, we have a, like I was saying, the, the leaves, the organic dirt, as well as sphagnum moss. And we throw a little corner of sphagnum moss in here 
which that's just going to be the wet side. That's what's going to stay wet a little bit more. Um, that's how these guys thrive. There's not much else needed. We just put a little bit of calcium in there and then that's it. I mean, sometimes if a dubia dies, I'll toss the dubia in here as, as like extra protein. I'll also put Vivariums in the Mist products on top of here, like the uh, freeze-dried uh, uh, guppies or uh, the freeze-dried minnows, um, as well as some of the powders I put on here as well. I've made TikTok videos with um, like a specialized or a sped up um, time-lapse TikTok videos with the Vivariums in the Mist products, as well as the Rapashi which I'm gonna be going over that again and start making a little bit more um, as my appearance grows. But yeah, guys, it's pretty simple um, to get into it. Obviously, you have to learn the whole business side to it other than just breeding these guys, but it is, it is, it's a fun, fun industry that still, overall, does not require too much effort to be able to do. I bought these bins, I've drilled them, and then after that, I use them animal after animal, species after species, and I've had no problems with any one of these bins. Um, I like the height to them um, because it allows the humidity like this to kind of stay trapped at that level, the humidity that's a little bit lower to the ground, and then but it still allows for a lot of ventilation to go through here. I know a lot of people like to um, um, put like, so when it's a little bit higher like this, I don't necessarily have isopods kind of like escaping or climbing out, which is a good thing. I know people like to put the net over their um, containers to be able to um, like block uh, fruit flies from breeding or stuff like that. But when you're breeding to this scale, fruit flies can be um, something that's just common with it, but it isn't here. And that's why you haven't seen like any fruit flies on the hands or anything like that flying past the camera is because what we use here is this product called Mosquito Bits. And it's basically like um, bacteria covered um, or corn kernels coated in, I forgot what it was, in a bacteria. And that bacteria attacks fruit fly larva. And so the fruit fly larva won't survive or won't make it to adulthood to be able to, you know, they breed or anything like that. So it's a good way. We spray those with our bins maybe once every two months and uh, it just keeps the fruit flies, you know, it keeps them at bay. Um, summer is a little bit more harsh, so we do spray that a little bit more, but we don't, di we dilute it a lot. So um, it just focuses on the, the bacteria. Um, that's like a few insights that I would have when it comes to breeding at a larger scale like this. Like I said, I'm gonna bring you guys right over there. In one second, you guys can take a look at some of those bins um, and, the and the bioactive tank that we have together. Like this one, we have our dairy cows. You guys can see we have dairy cows in here. We have our knoll that's all the way up there. All the way up there. This cracked when we first got this, or we actually bought this tank cracked, so we just, you know, sealed it up that way. But down here, we have a thriving pothos population. We have a little bit of water right there. The knoll likes to go all up there, as well as the dairy cows go up there as well. Right now, it's all the way in the corner right there. But we have Madagascars in here, we have the anole, we have crickets, we have earthworms, we have superworms, we have dairy cows, we have a whole bunch of stuff in here. And that's kind of like how I like having the bins or the tanks set up and displayed like that. So we got a 30 gallon that's over there that I'm going to show you guys in one second. But yeah, as of for these guys, that is a lot of my tips. Now I'm going there maybe once a week until you get numbers like these. One more time where, you know, you're breeding this many of just one species and it's not just these i didn't just pick out the best of the best ones they just kind of were the first ones that were there in this spot but like these guys the giant canyons i just split these into two bins so they're a little bit thinner um thinned out than others but even these guys you guys can see there's a bunch more of these we still got a lot of them um, but these guys are dirt diggers so they do like to stay in the dirt a little bit more um, you see, as a new bin like this that we just set up, this is where some of the fruit flies will be at. Um, but there's still not a lot of them, and we sprayed this with the the mix. So um, these guys are going to be just hiding down. These are the giant canyons, if I did not say that already. These guys are lovely guys, especially to have in a tank. They're one of the main cleanup clues that cleanup crews that I have in almost every tank, um, every other tank that I have. 
and these guys get to a decent size they eat decent they eat a lot but they go inside the soil and they'll aerate the soil and dig around which is why i like having them within that within soil so the animals don't eat them as well but there's a whole bunch of other ones like let's go to the milk backs i will put this lid back on here i'll grab this milk back bin which is another Priscilla lavis species sorry about the angle guys it's getting a little tall harder for me to see but even in here these guys are doing the same thing gotta put more leaves in here but wow of course the one that i flip over doesn't look like there's a lot but you guys can see there's a lot down there they're getting ready now now that they know I feel like they, they're a little bit more trained and uh, we've been having some shows so we've been selling a lot but which one is it there we go there's there goes the actual colonies of them or the colony of them um i am going to be soon spreading them out into two other bins um clearing this bin out and then spreading them out into two bins so that's why i have this marker here because i need to move them into two bins now so we can really start breeding them out like that um but yeah guys uh let's go over to the other spot and uh yeah check out those isopods and those setups even for the spring tails that we have all right guys so here is you know the rest of the bins that we have we see we trust the products that we have and that's why we have over here past the 30 gallon tank we have three of these well really four of these big uh rapashi if you guys are looking for one you guys want to buy it um definitely message us we don't have them on our store for sale but we definitely will sell them um, if you guys are looking for any as well um, especially if you want to start breeding big these guys don't expire until the end of 2024 so we use basically two of these over the last year of all the species that we have that, that we just looked through as well as uh you know some of these we've only used two of them for then for then and here's one of them here's the last one of those two um is just emptied out literally jumps I don't even, yeah there you go just emptied that one out the other day um so you know we i'm telling you we stand by the products that we use or that we sell and we believe that they are good products here's all of the ingredients as well as they are labeled on our you guys can pause it and take a look but they are labeled on our website as well all the different ingredients but we use that for our springtails like we have right here i can open up this bin a little bit for you and we can take a look at what's in there and this is actively being used right now and you guys can see these are our orange springtails and our orange springtails love the bug burger they are thriving off of it as you guys can see we have oh, what five six bins of of these orange springtails like this they're obviously more throughout that this has been in here for a day now so they do like to you know they are tropical so they do you know run through i don't know if you guys can see them run throughout the dirt but we're not i'm not lying when i say that this is what we use for all of ours um let's go to temperance we have temperance temperance have a little bit right there they love it um we breed some on charcoal we breed some on soil um we got blue padoras as well as pink springtails we got a bunch of stuff but that's not the point of this video the point of it is what it's basically what it's like to breed um from a bigger scale or uh like a business scale for when it comes to isopods now all of ours we can say are going to be everything that we sell um we have not bought any imports uh that we have been made aware of everything that we've bought has been captive bred um there's only one um species that we have bred that i've bred for my own personal collection that i actually caught at my grandma's house years ago uh i think two three years three four years ago now and i ended up selling it and then i got some back from my friend um a few a year later when i was really getting back into it and that is the one species that we keep that was actually bred but now it's been five six generations of just breeding that species um, which i haven't even like really looked for the scientific names of it or anything like that um, but they do look like a um, scaver species uh from what i can tell but like even over here don't mind everything because i got a lot going on um 
we have the sphagnum moss, but in here we have Jupiter isopods right there. We're waiting some, for some babies from those guys. Um, but then even in here, we got Rapashi products, and these are even our red springtails. Now these, a funny little story before I end this video, is these guys we actually thought all died. Um, I did not see them for a long time in here. You guys can see here's some of the fruit flies again. But these ones I'm going to wait before I spray it. But they have been doing great for us now. These are the bins that you want um, to allow that bug burger to mold up a little bit more. Um, but they don't do it inside the ice pot enclosures. But this has no holes in it. It's literally just humidity. So I'm not surprised that's exactly how we want it when it comes to the springtails is to allow them to be able to just breed inside of there. Now these are our red springtails. Um, I do believe we got them imported, uh, or we got them from someone who import who imported them, and it wasn't necessarily the best for us. Here, let's see if you can get a better little picture. There you go. So we got, I feel like we got these imported because as you guys saw, April 29th of this year is when we got them, and they did not do well for us at all. But you guys can see, you know, we got tons of babies coming now. Like, it's great. I'm I'm so excited to see everything that's going on with these guys. There's another little video of it. But I, I'm so excited to see what's going on with these guys. They are, you guys can see, they just look so cool. But these guys are gonna be another project for us that hopefully in 2023, we can start breeding enough to sell. What I think happened is that the all the original adults did die off, but I had them for around a month or so before they even died off. So I'm thinking, that um, that those adults laid some eggs, and the the eggs when they grew up, they're the ones who got basically adapted to, um, the captive lifestyle, and they you know they were just a little bit more adapted when they were raised or when they were born, that they survived, and then now they've grown up to what they are now. So basically, I keep this lid on there exactly how it is because, after a month of not seeing any babies or any adults or anything no movement inside of this enclosure, I just put this enclosure to the side. I never touched it, I never fed them, I never did anything until around a month ago. I, um, you guys can see there's more right there. A month, no, like really two weeks ago, I, um, I was gonna get ready to throw this cup away and luckily I saved it this whole time just hoping, you know, babies would somehow come out and then, yeah, don't mind the cup, I was watering something, <laughs> but, um, I was hoping babies would come out, and uh, they didn't. So I just waited, 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 and uh, now, I went up, right when I was about to throw it out, I saw some red, and I saw some red moving. So I sprinkled some in here, I watered it just a little bit, and I closed that, and I've left it alone since then. And I think that's the best way for them to breed right now so I can get numbers up in here. But we have tons of orange springtails, white springtails. Um, we started moving into millipedes and some other stuff. So if you guys are really wanting to be a big reptile breeder, I definitely recommend um, getting one of these. They are a little bit, you know, a little bit of money, but they'll last you some years. Trust me, especially if you're not at the level that I'm at, that you can see as, as of right now. This will last you, the 70 ounce one will last you years. The 70 ounce, yeah, the 70.4 ounce. Um, this will last you for years. And it's only going to be, I think, around $60, $60 or so for this huge jar. So if you guys are really looking for something, I definitely recommend Rapashi Bug Burger. Um, if you're going to, just because you can get it in a bulk, big quantity like this. Um, but if you're looking just for a hobby breeder, I definitely recommend um, Rapashi Bug Burger, Rapashi Morning Wood, even in this size jar, um, Rapashi um, Super Load, as well as, you know, Vivariums in the Mist, which is another brand that we truly support. It's one of the brands that we originally started off with, which was the Spring Cuisine, which I can bring you guys and show you exactly what that looks like on top of one of our shipping boxes. That is the Spring Cuisine from Vivariums in the Mist. This one is not open, um, but the only reason why we don't necessarily use these right now, um, I do give them to my friends and stuff like that just so they can use them and I can get the reviews off of them. Um, for any new products that they may come out with. 
but I've used every single one of them and I've made videos on every single one of these guys. Uh, it's just, since we breed at such a scale now, these are the packages that come in. But this is great if you're going to do your springtails or your isopods. These are great, great, great products. I definitely can't recommend anything else other than Rapashi and this. Um, as of right now, there's obviously home remedies and stuff like that, but I think this one is $10. So, but for $10 for a bag this size is definitely going to last you a while. So I definitely recommend going for this, going for Bug Burger and really getting into it. So if you guys, you know, enjoyed this video, you guys are, uh, you guys have any questions about what it's like to breed at this scale or some challenges that I faced breeding at this scale, some mistakes that I've made that you can learn from definitely message me, uh, reach out. I'd love to answer all of your guys' questions. You guys can reach out to the Facebook um, page at Featured Creatures or the business page website at FeaturedCreatures.shop. Like I said, I'd love to answer all of your questions um, in regards to Rapashi or anything else. We also have Super Horn and Veggie Burger because I do have a Bearded Dragon, so I recommend that as well. And sometimes, even if they won't eat it, um, the Veggie Burger by itself, you can also gut load the insects with the veggie burger and feed that specifically to your uh, to your animal, to a bearded dragon or other animal that eats insects. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I, it was a little bit more of a rant. Um, oh, but before I leave, here's some of the other species we have. Um, shiny gators, rubber duckies, blue pigeons, penguins, lavas, spatulatus, hasai high yellow, um, Japanese magic potions, scaver ghosts, tons of other stuff, werneries, and then here's our two species of millipedes, the Florida ivory as well as the bumblebee, um, orange lavis, I forgot what this one was, uh, bolivari, I, I believe, that one, or that one is the bolivari, I forgot to label those, um, but yeah guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one, peace! Mm -hmm.